And we know how DNA can affect your health and happiness, but does it also impact who we vote for? I would say absolutely yes. yes. You're going to meet the experts who say they've discovered the political gene. And the Fox 13 10 o'clock news is starting now. And then at 1030, if you're a, all right, a Democrat or a Republican, were you born that way? Craig Patrick is going to tell you about your political gene, DNA. Now, when Americans go to the polls this November, November 6th, they will have a big decision to make. But did you know your genes could play a role in how you vote? Our Craig Patrick's going to take a look at your political DNA next. All right, first, I want to tell you about this. Two scientists have dropped a political bombshell. Their research uh, is suggesting now that we are born with certain genes that make us Republicans or Democrats, conservative or liberal. Fox 13's political editor, Craig Patrick, is, is going to show you now how our views may be coded into the DNA. The sky will open. The light will come down. He's the original Maverick. Politicians will say just about anything. A career politician. I'm not a witch. To win you over. I'm also a fiscal conservative. But science suggests we're wired to take one side or the other from the moment we're born. We could be naturally inclined to tune out the Democrats or be turned off by the Republicans. As we grow, our genes can make us liberal. Or they can make us conservative. Real women by their own birth control. Dr. Kenneth Bloom and Dr. John Giordano discovered the so-called political gene. It regulates dopamine. You know what happens when you age? Your dopamine goes down. Dopamine is the chemical that gives us the feeling of pleasure when we succeed. Some people are born with a full set of receptors that transmit a stable flow of it. They tend to like stability, routine, and structure over Woodstock. Bloom and Giordano say they have the A2 gene, the conservative gene. And they say those who have it also have a brain designed to react to fear. That's fear of crime, foreign threats, or debt. I know guys that have a couple of million dollars and they're scared to death that they, they're going to be broke soon. Meanwhile, others don't have the same receptors, so they don't get as much dopamine. They tend more to be individuals. They tend to take chances, seek change that could lead to greater success, which in turn drives up their dopamine. They have the A1 gene, the so-called liberal gene, according to Bloom and Giordano. They say it comes with a brain shape that can process complex ideas better than others, but it also makes them more likely to get discouraged when they don't see results. They put you in a pain on mind list that quick. Which could explain why liberal voters did not turn out as much in 2010 when Rick Scott and the Tea Party took off. Let's get to work. But wait a minute. Governor Scott is a staunch conservative who also took big risks as an entrepreneur. John McCain took pride in being a maverick. President Bush also took huge risks from trying to privatize Social Security to invading Iraq. I'm the decider. Well, Bloom and Giordano say they may all be natural-born liberals whose life experience overrode their genetics. I would say absolutely yes. yes. They say Mitt Romney is tougher to peg. In fact, that's the knock on him. Two men trapped in one body, Mitt versus Mitt. Bloom and Giordano suspect Romney has the liberal gene based on his overall record. He's challenging a progressive Democrat and President Obama, known for being calm, calculating, and risk-averse. Then Mitt Romney could be the natural-born liberal and President Obama the natural-born conservative. Absolutely. 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 Well, keep in mind that's just their opinion based on their observation. Bloom and Giordano did not perform genetic tests on President Obama, Mitt Romney, or the other candidates they assessed in our report. But they have done genetic tests on a lot of people and matched it to their political ideology, and they've concluded that we are wired to lean one way or the other, and their report here was just published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. John? Well, this is really curious, isn't it, Craig? It says a lot about who we are, I, I'm, I suspect. But some states here, let's say California, that's uh, much more liberal. Others like Mississippi, conservative, and yet you got a big state like Florida here that's a swing state who goes either way. How do these scientists tie that to genetics? Well, they say people with similar gene types tend to hang out together. A1s tend to marry A1s, A2s tend to marry A2s. They tend to be more comfortable together, and so they stay in or drift to large communities. 
But there are also some other factors here that affect our political views. For example, religion is one of them. The South, for example, is very conservative. And the Bible Belt also runs right through the South. So you're really talking about environment here. That's, that's the other factor. I, I guess the question is, can our genes be uh, manipulated to make us conservative or liberal? Well, Dr. Bloom says, yes, they can. He said we're not there yet, but he said sometime in the future we may be able to alter DNA or wire a child or an entire generation to be liberal or conservative. Again, we're talking about the future and some serious ethical questions here that we may face down the road. But again, Bloom and Giordano say our DNA is only part of the equation and our life experience can in fact override it. All right, I'm going to go home and check my genes today. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, thank you very much.